Before we begin, a quick word from our sponsor. These days, internet privacy is a major concern to us all. All sorts of snoopers want to monitor and collect data about your online activities. NordVPN shields you from them. Internet service provider monitors the whole internet traffic that pours through its servers and stores logs of your online activity. Your data, such as financial information, interests and passwords and emails, might be valuable to third parties, hackers and even government. When you browse the internet using a VPN, your communications are encrypted, allowing you to stay private online. VPN also allows you to access content not normally available in your location and connect to hundreds of remote servers in different locations securely. Sign up today at nordvpn.com slash markfelton and enter the promo code markfelton to get 68% off a two-year plan and an extra month for free. Protect yourself online today with NordVPN. The V-2 was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. Developed by a Nazi design team including Werner von Braun of later NASA fame, the missile was used to bombard London and targets in northwest Europe from September 1944 until April 1945, killing 4,490 people and injuring over 11,000. But the V-2 was also the first man-made object that could reach space and after the war, a series of extraordinary tests were conducted by the Americans, using captured German V-2s to launch monkeys into space. These unfortunate creatures and the captured rockets would eventually pave the way for humans to follow them into space. The V-2 had been developed and tested at the Peenemünde facility in northern Germany until the British launched a massive air raid on the 17th to 18th of August 1943, codenamed Operation Hydra. Thereafter, it was decided to move V-2 production underground at a new facility called Mittelwerk, or Central Works, near the town of Nordhausen. Slave labour from the nearby Mittelbau Dora concentration camp helped produce the rockets, 20,000 slave labourers dying in the process. The Allies knew the significance of the Mittelwerk complex, and on the 11th of April 1945, the facility was captured by elements of the US 3rd Armoured and 104th Infantry Divisions. Mittelwerk was a veritable Aladdin's cave of high-tech missiles and components, and the Americans were keen to snatch as much material as possible for themselves, to the exclusion of their British and Soviet allies, particularly the latter. Werner von Braun and his large team of scientists and technicians were not captured at Mittelwerk. They had gone into hiding on the 15th of April after fleeing the area as US forces moved in. Two days after Hitler's suicide on the 30th of April 1945, von Braun's brother Magnus went out looking for US troops. The rocket scientists knew their value to the Americans and were duly taken prisoner, agreeing to cooperate with US scientists. All culpability for the deaths and maltreatment of slave labourers were deliberately downplayed by the Americans, who effectively bleached these war criminals' records clean and shipped them off to the States. The Americans had to move quickly at Mittelwerk, as the area was supposed to form part of the Soviet zone of occupation in Germany, and Red Army troops would arrive by the 5th of May 1945. Special Mission V2 was created, and the Mittelwerk site was stripped of anything of value, shipping out trainloads of complete V-2 missiles, tons of components and launching apparatus. Just before the Soviets were due to arrive, the Americans permitted the British to pick over what was left, the UK managing to salvage parts sufficient to construct eight V-2s for their own research programme codenamed Operation Backfire. It gives some idea of the scale of the Mittelwerk complex that the British were still able to remove 400 railway freight wagons full of V-2 parts after the Americans had already taken all the best stuff. The vast amount of V-2 material and documents, plus von Braun and his team, were shipped to the White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico, where America's rocket program had been established in 1944. By 1946, the Americans were ready to begin testing the V-2. Many different projects involved the V-2s, but the one that we are focusing on is Project Blossom, 
the project to place the first biological organisms into the upper atmosphere and space. It was an important stage in eventually placing a human into orbit. The first astronauts were four rhesus monkeys that rode modified V-2 missiles to the edge of space. During the war, von Braun had wanted to explore putting a man into space and had drawn up plans for man-carrying versions of the V-2. But as the missiles were urgently required to bombard London and other targets, little progress was made in this direction. A few rocket tests were made going for altitude records, and on the 20th of June 1944, a German V-2 reached 108.5 miles, or 174.6 kilometers above the Earth, becoming the first man-made object to officially enter space. This is detailed in my video, Nazis in Space, link in the end screen. The British came up with a practical man-carrying design for the V-2 in 1946, codenamed Megarock, though budgetary constraints meant that it was never built. If it had been, scholars believe that the first man in space would have been British, at least a decade earlier than Yuri Gagarin. I've also made a video about Megarock, link in the end screen. At White Sands, V-2s were used as sounding rockets, carrying scientific instruments into the upper atmosphere as part of a series of tests. The Americans constructed 75 rockets from parts using them until 1952. The first animals sent up were fruit flies on the 20th of February 1947 to explore what happened to biological material exposed to radiation at high altitude. This V-2 reached space, passing the then 50-mile or 80-and-a-half-kilometer United States Air Force and 62-mile or 100-kilometer international boundaries for space, soaring to 68 miles or 109 kilometers above the Earth. The nose capsule successfully ejected and deployed its parachutes, the flies surviving to land safely. The decision was then taken to launch an animal closer in physiology to a human, as part of Project Blossom. The Blossom V-2 was a specially modified version of the wartime weapon. Its fuselage was longer by 65 inches, or 1.6 meters. Seven Blossom V-2s were created. The first attempt to get a monkey into space was made on the 11th of June 1948, carrying a rhesus monkey named Albert I. The animal was strapped to a special frame placed in the rocket's nose cabin. It was not intended to be a one-way mission, as the cabin would eject and float down to Earth by parachute, as with the fruit flies experiment. The launch of Albert I was successful. V2 climbing to 39 miles, or 62.7 kilometers. But then a valve failed, cutting off fuel to the engine. It is believed that Albert I was already dead by this stage due to breathing problems inside his tiny cabin. The cabin ejected from the rocket, but the parachutes also failed, which would have killed the monkey anyway. But the Americans persevered. Just over a year later, on the 14th of June 1949, a second monkey-equipped Blossom V-2 was launched, carrying Albert II. Again the V-2 lifted off fine and climbed, probably reaching apogee at 83 miles, or 133 kilometers altitude. But even though the cabin ejected successfully from the V-2, again the parachutes failed to open, and Albert II plunged to his doom, dying on impact. But Albert's death was not in vain. Throughout the flight, biomedical data from the monkey was successfully transmitted by radio to ground control, giving scientists valuable insights into the problems human astronauts would face. A third test was made on the 16th of September 1949, with animal astronaut Albert III aboard. This time the V-2 malfunctioned during the early stage of the launch. 10.7 seconds into flight, and at three miles high, the tail exploded, killing Albert and destroying the entire missile. The last rhesus monkey V-2 astronaut was Albert IV. He was launched on the 8th of December 1949. All systems worked perfectly. Nine, eight, 
Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Rocket away. Radar tracking devices swing into operation. Albert IV reached 79 miles, or 127 kilometers high, before his cabin ejected from the rocket. But, once again, the parachutes failed, and Albert IV plunged to his death, transmitting biomedical data all the way down. Project Blossom demonstrated that the US still had a long way to go before it could attempt to place a man into space and bring him back alive. Experiments using monkeys and later apes continued until the 1960s using US rockets, even after man had made it into space. The first monkeys to survive were a rhesus monkey named Miss Abel and a squirrel monkey named Miss Baker. They were launched on the 28th of May 1959 atop a Jupiter ballistic missile. They reached an altitude of 300 miles or 480 kilometers above the Earth and were weightless for nine minutes. Miss Abel died four days after the flight after a reaction to anaesthetic while an infected medical electrode was being removed. Miss Baker, however, lived on until 1984 with no ill effects. She was awarded a Certificate of Merit for Distinguished Service by the ASPCA for supporting controlled scientific use of animals as space pathfinders for the mutual benefit of man and animals. When she died at the age of 27, she was also the world's oldest squirrel monkey. The first non-monkey American astronaut, Alan Shepard, entered space in May 1961 aboard Mercury Redstone 3. Please don't forget to subscribe, join my channel, and together we will rule the historical galaxy. Please also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton, and you can help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.